Elspeth's escape from the underworld has caused a new god to appear, and the implications of what's going on with all of this are actually horrifying. Greetings, owners of fine luxury cardboard rectangles. I hope that this Christmas Eve finds you well. Based on the time it is where I am right now, it is Christmas Eve by the time you watch this video. And what's actually kind of neat is we're going to be talking about a card that falls into Christmas colors. You may, re you may remember a number of days ago, I did a video talking about the hidden god in Theros. Well, the hidden god has emerged. We now actually have the spoiler card for this missing god, and that's what we're going to go over today. We're looking at Clothis. Clothis, god of destiny. One green, one red, one colors. And let me just say, the predictions that I made in my previous video, some of them turned out to be true, like the fact that she is red green. Now, I was off when I said that I thought she would care about big creatures. I was incorrect in that. But that's all right, because when you actually take a look at the card and realize what her abilities are, it makes you realize this is super, super intense. So, one green, one red, one colorless, or generic mana if you're, if you're one of the noobs and you don't like the old school wordings. And uh, that's for a 4-5 legendary enchantment creature, God. Look at all the words that fit on that type line. That's another thing, actually. If you guys didn't, um, if you guys didn't know, it looks like wizards might be. Now we don't know 100%. The uh, the the cards that we saw for like off the Optimus Prime Magic card that we saw from the Heroes of the Realm, that kind of gave the hint that going forwards we may actually start to see legendary being represented by the border of the card so that they can free up space on the type line. Because as you see, legendary enchantment creature takes up a massive amount of space, but you can transmit the concept of it being legendary simply with the legendary border. Now this has the constellation style border, which means we will see this card in a special variation inside the collector's boosters. And I am genuinely curious to see what that's gonna look like because it's probably going to look pretty dope in all honesty. I want I want to see more constellation cards so I can make a judgment on those. But anyways, what we've got is a 3 mana 4 5 creature that's a creature sometimes. It's indestructible. Now, as long as your devotion to red and green is less than 7, Clothice is not a creature. Now, you've already got your devotion for those of you who don't know what devotion is if you're new to this, devotion is equal to the number of mana symbols that you have of those colors on permanents you control. So, for example, if we were to look at this god, she counts as a red and a green devotion. So you only actually need a total of five more red mana symbols in the casting cost or green mana symbols or any combination. So if you had a Yorvo out, for example, he would give three devotion slots to this. Although, admittedly, I mean, paying for paying three green for Yorvo might be a little tricky. Although, on the other hand, Clothice does have an ability that will assist with mana fixing as well. So, to continue on with what the card does after the part about the devotion, it says at the beginning of your pre-combat main phase, exile target card from a graveyard. If it was a land card, add a red or a green. Otherwise, you gain two life, and Clothice deals two damage to each opponent. I do like the fact that they have changed the wording, the old school wording of these kind of cards, it would be choose an opponent and Clothice will deal two damage to that opponent. But in this case, if you're playing in multiplayer, any kind of commander craziness, then this is going to impact multiple players, which makes the ability even stronger. And what's also cool actually about this is Wizards has released a tiny little flavor blurb to go with this as well. For those of you who didn't know, what's going on is Wizards of the Coast will not be releasing a novel in either physical or digital form for Theros. We don't know if this is the new way of things going forwards, or it's just specifically for Theros that they've decided to skip on writing an actual novel for. But we are going to be getting, as cards come out, we're going to be getting these little blurbs that add a little bit of flavor to the world. And admittedly, I do like getting a full story more, but at least it's not just the card because there's no room for any kind of flavor text on Clothice. All the abilities clearly take up so, so much. This card is packed 
to the brim with words, right? I mean, the, the name of the card takes up almost the top, the entirety of the top of the card. The types take up the entire type line. The text box is just crammed full. Literally the only place you have more room for anything is after indestructible. If you wanted to go crazy questing beast style and slam some more abilities onto this card. But the little flavor blurb that Wizards has provided says, the God of Destiny Clothice does not appreciate those who would manipulate fate. And a response is swift and final. If a certain someone were attempt to escape the underworld, Clothice would do everything in her power to stop them. Now, to me, a certain someone, I mean, who's, who's, who is the focus of this set? It's Elspeth. We all know that. So Clothice, pretty, this pretty much has to be referencing Elspeth because Elspeth escaping from the underworld has caused the underworld to start leaking like a sieve so that it's easier for other beings to also, it's like, a, it's like a chain reaction. It's like, you know, it's like if you ripped through a wall or something, like if you crash through a wall like the Kool-Aid man, oh yeah, well that hole's still there. So other guys are like, I'm getting on up out of here too. So Clothice, who resided in the underworld, is the god of destiny. Now most likely, what's caused the biggest shift in everything is what happened with Xenagos and Elspeth, right? Xenagos, Xenagos was uh, originally, as far as I understand, from Theros, and and so like to a degree, his fate was set. Maybe even like going to kind of mess with becoming a god might have theoretically been something that could have been part of his fate. But Elspeth is not a natural denizen of Theros, right? She is from a completely different plane of existence. So she is really the spike in the wheel. She is, she is one who was never given a destiny, and as a result, her actions can wildly alter. Like, anybody who comes from outside of, the, basically, Clothice has dictate over the fate of all beings on, on Theros, presumably gods as well. So if any, anybody from outside of that is going to be able to influence fate to a degree by not being part of the original plan. But if you're a regular mortal, you're not going to be able to exert that much influence. However, as a planeswalker, Elspeth is extremely powerful. And due to that power level, the influence she's going to have is much larger. And that's why you're seeing this scenario where all kinds of beasts are escaping from the underworld. The natural order has been thrown out of whack. Clothais has decided to ascend from the underworld to come to the overworld, the main world, and to put things aright. Now we talked about her artwork in the previous video, but I am going to do so to a degree again here today because we are doing a spoiler video on her. So you can see that her eyes are bound over with her own hair. This, this goddess is based on Clotho, who is, the Gre is, is, one of the, uh, is one of the Greek gods of fate, essentially, where there was three different Three different gods, goddesses, however you want to look at it, where they would spin out the, they would weave people's fates out of thread, right? And one, one would measure it, one would cut it, they would design, like all this sort of thing. They each had their own role. But it looks like Clothice is really an amalgamation of all of them. It's, there's no other information that I've seen so far to indicate there are any other gods involved in this because she's just called the god of destiny. So the idea of spinning people's fate is tied in here, the threads of fate. It's her actual hair that's being used to bind her eyes. Her hair is the threads of fate. They are woven up into her weaponry as well, whether it be that spear she's holding in one hand or the dangling blades, which give you sort of a feeling of like the sort of Damocles dangling over the, the head of people's existences. She has three faces, in, if you consider the masks on either side of her head, to be different faces. One of them has open eyes. One of them is bound like with over as well in terms of not being able to see. So I don't know if this is supposed to represent two other goddesses, two other aspects of her personality, that sort of a thing. It's, it's an interesting concept. I do like the scale here. You can see the little building there that's in the forefront that really gives you an idea of the aspect of her. And if you take a close look, you can also see birds that help to illustrate the scale, the, the absolute mammoth size of this lady here. So I said that the implications of what going, what's going on are horrifying, and they are indeed. If you take a look 
at her main ability, because indestructible and the devotion thing are like the sub abilities. All gods have that. That's a standard package for a Theros god. It's the final ability chunk there that really differentiates Clothice and determines what she's all about. So we'll go over that again. At the beginning of your pre-combat main phase, exile target card from a graveyard. If it was a land card, add a red or green. Otherwise, you gain two life and Clothice deals two damage to each opponent. So this is essentially Clothice removing things from existence, right? Normally, the, I've, I've, I've determined your fate. You are going to die and you're going to go to this portion of the underworld. Where Clothice isn't playing around anymore. Nobody's going to the underworld now. Anybody who needs to be taken care of, whoever she chooses, she's obliterating their existence entirely. It doesn't matter whether it's a land or a living being. It's ceasing to exist and she's drawing out its entire, like every bit of the essence of whatever it is she's er eradicating is being pulled out of it. So a land has mana essence drawn out of it and then that's converted into either a red or green mana for you. Or in the case of anything else, she's drawing out its living essence and using that to give you life and to harm your opponents. And that's actually pretty cool from a red green perspective where the life gain comes in on the green side and the damage comes in on the red side. It fits perfectly from a thematic color standpoint. But also it, the, the horrific nature of, you have to understand that in Theros, death is never the end. This is called Theros, Theros beyond death, right? Death is never the end. When your life ends, you're going to a second life based on how you lived your first life, but not anymore, not with Clothais. Once she makes this decision to exile you, you no longer exist. You are no longer part of the natural order. This is essentially like almost like a goddess gone mad. Her natural role is to maintain the fate and destiny of individuals. And now instead, she's completely eradicating, eradicating their existence so they no longer get to be anything. And that actually also ties into Elspeth. Elspeth with her escape ability, right? She's permanently exiling four cards. So is she actually consuming the essence of multiple individuals or things in the underworld to fuel her escape from the underworld? Is it act is what she doing actually is what Elspeth doing actually vicious and horrific as well? Because the idea of being completely unmade and obliterated in a place where nobody is normally. Everybody gets to go and exist afterwards because of the setup of the gods is truly horrifying, right? And I mean, it's, a, it's the perfect answer to what Elspeth is doing as well. It's like, I'm going to keep coming back from the underworld. Well, it's like, well, then fine. I will pull out every stitch, every fiber of your essence, and I will scatter it to the winds so that no one will find even a molecule, a remaining atom of your existence. And that is an insane level of power to wield and terrifying to think of how every turn this is happening, your graveyard, your opponent's graveyard, Clothice doesn't care what side you're on. Clothice only cares about maintaining what she considers to be the proper order, and whoever's existences she has to obliterate to make that happen, she will. So overall, this card to me is incredibly flavorful. It nails the concept of a god of destiny who's gone, essentially in my opinion, somewhat berserk from the, the topsy-turvy nature of what's happened to the natural order, right? This is, everything's gone wrong, and now she's gonna set it right no matter what it takes. And in terms of the actual power level of the card, just as like playable for standard or something like that, it actually seems really, really solid. Occasional mana acceleration, but mostly just an, an inevitable, inexorable damaging to your opponent. Like, okay, you're further from winning the game further and further from winning the game, as every time she activates, it's a four point life swing. I go up by two, you go down by two. So the first activation, you're at 18, I'm at 22. Then she's 16, then you're 16 and I'm 24. I guess not activation, because it's a triggered ability, but you get what I'm saying either way. This is a very cool card from a power perspective and a very, very cool card from a flavor perspective. I would absolutely love to have more details about this scenario and know what's going on with Clothice. But anyways, that is that is one man's opinion, one magic historian's opinion on the subject. So I invite you to share your thoughts about this card 
in the comments below. What sort of a view do you have on it from a power level, like a playable level, and also from a flavor level? Are you excited about this card? Do you not really care? What, what are your feelings? Share them below. Thanks everybody for coming by. On a side note, Teespring's doing something really cool right now where they are allowing me to sell my merch at a discount, but I still get my full share of the proceeds. So if you're interested in picking up some of my merch, you can use the code SNOWFALL and you will get a 10% discount. Not too shabby, I gotta say, that's pretty cool. Get yourself some nice Christmas gifts. You deserve it. Big shout out to my patrons and channel members. Thank you very much for supporting the work that I do. And I will see all of you tonight for a Christmas Eve hangout stream. I look forward to seeing you there. Remember, my friends, together we are the sixth color of magic.